If we examine the active site of chymotrypsin, we're going to discover a collection of three different residues, three different amino acids that act together, that work together to promote and catalyze the cleavage of peptide bonds. And this collection of three amino acids is known as the catalytic triad. So it's the catalytic triad inside the active site of chymotrypsin that essentially catalyzes the cleavage of peptide bonds. Now, this catalytic triad consists of three different amino acids. One of these amino acids is serine, so serine-195. The second amino acid is histidine-57. And the third amino acid is aspartate-102. So, let's begin by discussing the role that each one of these amino acids actually plays in promoting the hydrolysis of peptide bonds. Well, let's begin with serine-195. We know that chymotrypsin is an example of a serine protease. And so what that means is it's ultimately the serine residue inside the active site. It's this residue here that acts as a nucleophile and will attack the carbon of the carbonyl, that peptide bond, nucleophilically. And we'll see exactly how that works out in just a moment. Now, the problem with serine in this form shown here is the side chain of serine is in its alcohol form. And we know from organic chemistry that alcohols aren't very good nucleophiles. So the problem here is this alcohol is not a strong nucleophile. And in the form we have it now, it will not be good enough nucleophile to attack that peptide bond. And so what must happen is the histidine and the aspartate must work together to transform this serine into a strong nucleophile. So what we essentially want to do is transform the alcohol into its conjugate base, the alkoxide. Because remember, alkoxide molecules, alkoxide ions, have a much better ability to actually act as nucleophiles because they have a better electron density around that oxygen atom. So what happens is the negatively charged side chain of aspartate basically interacts with this partially positive hydrogen atom. So if we examine, so where is the color red? So let's take red and blue. So if we examine the charge value on this hydrogen, because the nitrogen is more electronegative than the hydrogen, what that means is this H atom will bear a partial positive charge. And so these two side chains will basically interact as shown in this diagram. We have electro electromagnetic interaction between the oxygen and the H. And what this does is it basically positions this entire side chain of histidine 157 in the correct orientation so that the next interaction can take place. Now, what exactly is the next interaction? Well, this nitrogen contains two electrons, a lone pair of electrons. On top of that, we can also say that the nitrogen has a partial positive charge, uh, a partial negative charge, because nitrogen is more electronegative than the nearby carbons. And so we can say there is this partial negative charge that exists on this nitrogen, and so, it will interact with the H atom because this H atom of this alcohol, of the serine, contains a partial positive charge because this oxygen contains a partial negative charge because of its high electronegativity value. And so aspartate, one to, uh, aspartate 102 basically interacts with histidine 57 to move it and position it into the correct orientation so that the lone pair of electrons on the nitrogen can now interact and pull away this H atom. Now, once the H atom is pulled away, that transforms that alcohol group into an, al into an alkoxide group. And because the alkoxide is a much stronger nucleophile, this will now interact with the carbon of the carbonyl and essentially break that peptide bond, as we'll see in just a moment. So we see that the serine-195 in its alcohol form is simply not a strong enough nucleophile and to transform it into a better nucleophile, a nearby histidine-57 pulls away the hydrogen ion to form an alkoxide. 
and to actually position the histidine so that these two residues can interact very well, this aspartate uses its full positive charge to basically position and move this histidine side chain in the correct orientation. And together, this catalytic triad, as we'll see in just a moment, actually promotes the cleavage of the peptide bond. So let's actually discuss what the reaction mechanism is. So what are the details of the reaction mechanism that takes place inside the active site of chymotrypsin? So let's begin in the following stage. So we have the aspartate 102 that positions this histidine 57 so that these electrons can interact with the H atom and so they begin to pull away the H atom and as the H atom is being pulled away this is being transformed into an alkoxide and the alkoxide is a strong enough nucleophile it contains a high enough electron density around the oxygen as to actually attack nucleophilic this carbon of this peptide bond and so once the carbon is attacked that displaces the pi bond and places those two electrons that were in the pi, that were initially in the pi bond onto this oxygen so the serine alkoxide acts as a nucleophile and attacks the carbon of the carbonyl and what we ultimately form after step one is we form a tetrahedral intermediate so in this particular case, if we examine this bond here, we see that we have sp2 hybridization. And what that means is this is going to be a planar molecule and that gives this molecule stability. But as soon as this attack takes place, we form a tetrahedral intermediate. And on, on top of that, we're going to have a negative charge on this oxygen and this tetrahedral intermediate because of that negative charge and because this molecule is no longer planar it's not going to be as stable so in step one we form the relatively unstable tetrahedral intermediate so we call it a tetrahedral because here we have one two three sigma bonds and here the carbon has one two three four sigma bonds now, because of the instability of this intermediate, a special pocket, a special region on the chymotrypsin enzyme known as the oxyanion hole or oxyanion pocket basically interacts with the negative charge on this oxygen. So inside the pocket, we have these nitrogen atoms that contain H atoms. And these partially positive H atoms can interact with the fully negative oxygen atom. And so what the oxyanion hole does is it stabilizes this tetrahedral intermediate. Now, because of the instability of the tetrahedral intermediate, it's not going to exist for a very long time. And what that means is it's going to very quickly collapse. And when it collapses, what happens is the lone pair of electrons on the oxygen forms a pi bond with this carbon. And that breaks off this relatively weak nitrogen bond. And so when this bond breaks off, the electrons on those bond, on that bond, basically move on and grab this H atom. Because by grabbing the H atom away from this histidine, this loses that positive charge and becomes more stable. And that can be seen in this diagram here. So after step two, after this tetrahedral intermediate collapses, that essentially acylates this serine residue. So this acyl group is now attached onto this oxygen and this amide has been formed. And the amide takes away this H atom from the nitrogen found on this side chain of histidine 57. And so now we have this slight interaction between the nitrogen and the hydrogen, and we still have the interaction between the oxygen and this hydrogen. So this acylates the serine and forms an amide molecule that deprotonates the histidine nitrogen shown here. And once we form this amide product, in the next step, the amide basically moves away. And when the amide moves away, we basically make room in the active side 
uh, for a water molecule to actually enter. Because remember, it's the water molecule that will ultimately also act as a nucleophile to basically help hydrolyze that peptide bond. So in the next step, once the amide product departs, we have the water molecule that comes into place. And so this water molecule it basically positions itself into the same position that we had this amide in this step and once it positions into this location the lone pair of electrons on the nitrogen of this side chain of the histidine basically interact with this H and they deprotonate that, uh, uh, that water molecule. Now this is a very important step because just like serine contains the alcohol and the alcohol is not a strong enough nucleophile, so what happens is the H atom is removed to create the alkoxide and transform into a good nucleophile. In this case, water is also not a strong enough nucleophile to actually attack the carbon of this double bond. And so what must take place is, again, we see that the histidine actually takes away the H from this oxygen and that transforms the water into a hydroxyl and the hydroxide is a good enough nucleophile. So remember from organic chemistry that hydroxide molecules contain a full negative charge on the oxygen and so that makes it a strong nucleophile. And so this nitrogen takes away the H atom and these two electrons that were in the sigma bond now nucleophilically attack the carbon and this displaces the pi bond in the same way that we displace the pi bond here. And in the same way that we form this tetrahedral intermediate, we also form a tetrahedral intermediate in step five. And once again, to stabilize that relatively unstable and negatively charged tetrahedral intermediate, we have this oxyion, uh, oxyanion hole that contains the partially positive charge H atoms that can stabilize this full negative charge. And so because it's so unstable, it doesn't exist for a very long time. And what happens is, again, the two electrons on the oxygen basically form a pi bond between the carbon and this oxygen. And now what happens is this bond here, shown in green, that we basically formed in this step is now broken. And when this bond breaks, the two electrons that exist in, in that sigma bond now basically move on to this H atom and take away that H atom. And again, the reason we want to take away that H atom is because we want to remove this positive charge that exists on the ring of this histidine 57 side chain. And so in the next step, we basically reform that alcohol group found on the serine. We remove that H atom that was on the nitrogen. So we reform the histidine 57 uh, side chain. And we also form this final product, the carboxylic acid. And so now this is one of the products this is the other product and together we see that the end result is the cleavage of that peptide bond. So this bond between the nitrogen and the carbon was essentially cleaved in this step as described here. And so in the final step, this carboxylic acid product basically departs, it leaves the active side. And once it leaves the active side, it basically prepares the active side for another cycle of hydrolysis. So this is the reaction mechanism that actually takes place inside the active side of chymotrypsin. And so the important point about this mechanism is inside the active side, we have this catalytic triad, this collection of amino acids, which basically work together to create a strong nucleophile. And by creating a strong, a, a strong nucleophile, they essentially allow the hydrolysis, the catalysis of the hydrolysis of peptide bonds. And notice that we create a strong nucleophile, not only in this case, where we transform the alcohol into an alkoxide, but 
we also transform the water molecule, a poor nucleophile, into a hydroxide, into a much better nucleophile in step four. So we see that in the reaction mechanism, this catalytic triad basically acts twice to transform a poor nucleophile into a strong enough nucleophile to actually nucleophilically attack that peptide bond and ultimately break that peptide bond.